welcome to Kids Online. I am so glad that you're joining us for another Sunday here at Grace Point. If this is your very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. We love when you join us and you're new to us and oh, we do such exciting things and we just want to thank you for joining us today. Now, before we carry on, I know that there's a lot of children waiting because it was their birthdays this week and every week I say that. Guys, I hope you had a wonderful birthday, but let's go see if your name's on the board and then, ha, I'll speak to you afterwards. Well, happy birthday, all of you. I hope that you got spoiled rotten, you got all the gifts you wanted, and that you had a, a magnificent, mm, oh, awesomest, if, I, if there's even words like that, that day that you had your birthday. And if it's today, a very, very, very special happy birthday to you. <music> Before we go anywhere else, we have to do our most important thing today, and that is worship God with our money. Now, guys, why is it so important for us? Well, firstly, if we don't have the finances, I can't continue talking to you online. So please, boys and girls, just take your pocket money, take 10%. Ask mommy and daddy to put it into, into our bank account and you will be helping us to keep online with you. But that's not all. We are also back face to face. We are in person here at Grace Point. And therefore, we also have to make sure that the lights stay on and that we can provide some other stuff here at Grace Point. So all your money keeps us going online and here at church. And then, of course, which for me is the most important, is to make sure that we care for people who are less fortunate than you and I. And so your money and your parents' money make a big difference. We are able to buy food, we are able to give them um, clothes, um, and we provide for our, our neighbors that are not as um, wealthy or as not as, as well off or don't have as much as you and I have. So guys, Let's keep on getting giving to church. And remember, you're not giving it to me or to, to Reverend um, Rivers. You are giving it to God's church. And that is the most important thing. We don't take the money. It's not our money. So Milo and Jackie and myself, we don't touch your money. We give it to people who need your money. So please, guys, please also encourage your parents to keep on giving to us here at Grace Point. All right, so I know you guys have your DIY money boxes or maybe you've got a proper money box now. Please make sure that you put your little 10% in there, either your offering or your tithes for the week, for the month, and then let's pray for that money. Are you ready? Okay, close your eyes, hands together. Father God, we just thank you so much that we have the privilege to meet today online as well as face-to-face -face here at Grace Point. We are so grateful that we can worship you on both of these platforms. Father God, thank you for the, the families that are so generously, continuously give to us here at Grace Point so that we can continue the good work. Father, I pray that you will bless them right there where they are. And I pray for your favor to be upon them. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, boys and girls. Well, now, I know we are all getting ready and we've got our little shoes on and we're ready to do worship with Kezia. But before we do that, remember, we have got a whole new program that is happening face to face in person at Grace Point. And we, every week we tell you about one of those programs. Now, this week, guys, we are doing our traveling church here at Grace Point in our kids department. And what is that about? Well, if you guys have joined us ever, ever for a holiday program, you will remember that we went from one station to the next. We did craft, we did games, we did worship, we did lessons and so that's exactly what we're doing here. We are not in one classroom. We are moving from one spot to the other. Now, boys and girls, we had an amazing, messy church here last week. We found ants. We were looking for the look of Vaughan. We just had so much fun with our messy church last week. I think we're going to have 
as much fun with our traveling church this week. Now, if you haven't heard about our new program, why don't you just sit back a little bit, and before we go to Kezia, let's look at our video and of this new program, and then we're going to zoom straight to Kezia after this, and then I will see you after worship. Let's go. Hello, everybody from the Gen Now team. We are so glad that you are joining in and listening to our absolutely reimagining Gen Now. Are you ready to hear about all our exciting adventures and wonders that we are going to prepare for you every Sunday? Well, then you're at the right place. Well, boys and girls and family members, you know that we have been reimagining church here at Grace Point. Um, and you know what? We've decided that Jen now cannot stay behind. And so as from the 3rd of October, we have developed and designed and dreamed up an amazing new way of doing church here at Grace Point. And we want to invite you all to come back and come and join us as we do this new reimagining Jen now church. Now, everybody here that is with me is going to just give you a little bit of a glimpse of what you can expect when you come back to church. Welcome, boys and girls. This is the Church. So for me, the most exciting one I'll be discussing is about the moving church. Remember, the bigger kids, they have been on the journey on the, at the Hot Day Club last few years because we didn't have last year because of the COVID. But you know how uh, what the club works. So this moving church will be like what the club. You go from one station to another. So this will be exciting. So it's one part of the uh, reimagined church here at Grace Point. I'm so happy to do a new method of Mary Church at Grace Point. I think all together we can enjoy it. And then we can be nice, we can be happy to do the things together as a Gen Now team. And Mary Church is a church of doing things together to enjoy. So as we do this Gen Now Reimagine, we invite you to come along with us on the journey of Muddy Church where we'll be outside and enjoying the adventures outside. Messy Church where we'll be doing things intergenerationally with our families and doing church together. Also our Godly Play Church where we'll be looking at some godly play style of doing lessons and also our traveling church and these will be some of the weeks that we'll be looking at over our new gen now reimagined and so we invite you to come along with us on this journey please look out for more information that you'll be getting from our gen now leaders over the next couple of weeks we look forward to seeing you as part of this journey see you soon everybody bye, bye. Good morning everybody and welcome back to another Worship with Kezi. My name is Kezia, but you can call me Kez or Kezi, whatever you are comfortable with. And what is your name? Well, it's very nice to meet you and if you are here for the very first time, hi! I'm so excited you decided to join us this morning. I hope you have fun, but most importantly, I hope you learned something new. And for all of you who have been joining us for the past few weeks, Hi everyone, I'm so excited you guys are back. I hope you have fun and learn something new as well. So, today's songs are two very, very easy and fun songs. The first one is called the Joy, Joy, Joy. So we're gonna go. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart, we're down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. I got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. We're down in my heart. We're down in my heart, I got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. We're down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. 
Now this part, the words are a bit fast. So we're gonna slow the moves down. <laughs> so we're gonna go one, two, down in my heart. Way down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. And that's the first song. So are you guys ready? Perfect, let's go. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. fun everybody because i know i had so much fun with you guys so our second song is called your love keeps following me and it's super easy and super fun so we're gonna go you loved me as you found me your love keeps following me you wrapped your arms around me your love keeps following me by grace i am what i should be your love keeps following me you saw me as I could be. Your love keeps following me. And it's higher. And it's wider. And it's deeper. And I know this one thing. Wherever I go, your love keeps following me. <laughs> and those are all the moves. So, are you ready? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I ask, are you ready? Perfect, let's go.
that is all that I have for you guys today on Worship with Kizzy. I hope you guys had so much fun because I know I had so much fun with you guys. With that being said, I hope you guys had so much fun with Auntie Leon and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Welcome back boys and girls. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video about our new program. And I hope you had an amazing time praising and worshiping God. Do you guys know that's another form of worship? We worship God with our money and we worship God with our voices and our actions. So you already have worshiped God twice today. Isn't that amazing? Now, we're going to worship God with another way. We are going to listen to God what he says and in his word. That's another way of worshiping God, guys, is by listening to what God tells us in his word. Isn't that amazing? Wow, I just love worshiping God in every form that I can think of. Hey, because I love God so much. Now, let's start our lesson for today. Now, guys, as you know, we are busy with At The Movies, and our movie this week is called Bugs Life. Now, if you have the, the DVD called Bugs Life, please go and watch it afterwards. We also have a little bit of a, a trailer here that um, has the link. You guys can also go and watch that afterwards. But just ba bear with me and let's talk a little bit more about Bugs Life and why we chose this story. Now, we have been... We learned about ants last week and before that we learned about Toby and how Toby realized that God created us to be his friend. And then he created this amazing um, world for us to live in and to look after. And then we found our little ants creature and we learned about how we should be like those little ants. And this week we're talking about bugs. Now, <laughs> if you know the story, you will know that there is Flick who shame. He gets into trouble the whole time. He tries to help, but then he messes up. Um, you know, <laughs> this poor uh, Flick, he, he loves, um, you know, Princess Utter. And, and he just, oh, you know what, guys, this is such an amazing story because it teaches us that, you know what, no matter what is happening, we should always persevere. We should never give up. And that's what happens here. If you remember the story, or you're going to watch it a little bit later, um, the, the grasshoppers who's, um, who, who, who invades or who's the enemy of the ant colony that Flick is part of, once every now and then annually, every year, they want them to give them some food. And this year, poor Flick makes a big mistake, and, and by his actions, they lose all the food that they have gathered. And now Hopper, who's the leader of the grasshoppers, and the grasshoppers want this food. And now they say, we want double portion, or we're going to destroy and take over your colony. And we see how Flick goes and he finds more bugs to help him. He, he realizes, hey, guys, we can't do this on, us, on our own. We can't keep our colony on our own safely. We need new bugs. And so they go and, they f and he goes and he finds new bugs to help him, bigger bugs. And together they persevere and they, and they realize, oh, guys, we just keep on going and going and going. And at the same time, they also realize some of their plans aren't working. And so they go, hey, wait a minute. We need to change the way we were going to do this. And that's called flexibility, guys. So they persevered, but they were also flexible to change their plans. And so this is what is happening. And then eventually we see how um, all of them are safe and they even conquer. They win. They beat Hopper and the Grasshoppers. So please go and watch that movie and watch also the trailer if you don't have the movie. Now, I don't want to go on too much about the movie um, because there's actually two things that I want to highlight today. And that are the words perseverance and flexibility. Now, I'm going to ask Lolo and Vicky to help us understand what flexibility and perseverance means. So let's zoom to the two of them, and then I'm going to talk to you about something else when we come back. Okay, let's go. I'll see you later. Thank you, Lee. So for me, I'm going to talk about perseverance. Perseverance is doing something or keeping on asking for something without giving up. So that's what is perseverance. So perseverance can be good or sometimes can be 
not good. It can be bad. So when the perseverance is good is when we keep on like doing, asking good things. For example, if one of our family members is sick, then we pray for them to get better. So we keep on praying, praying until they get better. That's a good perseverance. But sometimes we keep on asking the things uh, or doing things which is perseverance but in a bad way. For example, when we are asking our moms and dads like, Mommy, please, can I have some toys? And your parents will say, but my child, no. We need to uh, use this money to buy something, to buy food for the people. Remember, when you pass that, that robot, we see people, they're asking for food. So I got only 100 rand, which I wanted to buy food for them. So no. I will not buy you this car or this present or anything. Then you know kids, they say, but mom, please, but mom. And mom will sometimes say, oh, this child has been nagging me. And now she will end up maybe buying, but not happy because it's not good for us because we need to help others. So sometimes when mom says no, we need to listen to mom. That maybe next time when I ask, she will buy me something. But let's just persevere or let's keep asking the things which is good for everyone. Okay, so now let's uh, zush to Lolo, who is going to talk about flexibility. Buy for me. weeks. Today we are going to talk about flexibility. Flexibility is to change things when we stuck, to change the way we think, to change and able to do new things. Let me give you an example. We plan to build a tree house outside. Halfway we realize our plan is not working. We stop and we stuck. Now we can change our plan or stay stuck. Let's keep persevering and changing things. When we do that, we will have our beautiful tree house. Bye, guys. See you next week. Let's zoom back to Lee. Welcome back, boys and girls. Wow. You know what? I just think Lolo and Vicky are so smart. They're so wise. Don't you think? Oh, I've learned so much about perseverance, not giving up, and flexibility, changing if something doesn't happen or work out the way we do. I just love how they gave us those examples. Hey, boys and girls. Wow, I am now going to persevere and I am going to be flexible if things don't work. I hope you are going to do the same thing. Now, you know what? In the Bible, boys and girls, we learn about another lady that was also, she was, oh, boy, oh, boy. She never gave up. She kept on going. And when she saw that this plan wasn't working, she got another plan. She kept on being flexible and changing until she got the answer she needed. Now, I don't want to give the story away. Let's go to the storyboard and listen to the story of the persistent widow and what happens. Are you guys ready to quickly zoom to the storyboard? Let's go. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to my story about the widow who kept asking. We find this story in Luke 18, verse 1 to 8 in the New Testament. Now, one day, Jesus told his disciples a story to encourage them to pray regularly and keep praying until the answer comes. There was a city judge who had no time for God 
and tended to look down on people who were not as rich and clever as he was. His job was to sort out arguments between people according to the law and make sure people were treated fairly. Rich people could afford to pay him a lot to do this for them, but poor people could not. Now, a poor widow, that is somebody who's lost her husband, a poor widow of that city had been treated very unfairly. Others had taken advantage of her and broken the law thinking they could get away with it. So she went to the judge for his help. She told him how unfairly she has been treated, but he did not have the time to listen to her. She was just a poor widow and he had more important cases to sort out. He just put her off, hoping she would go away and not come back. Ha, ah, but this widow would not be put off. People have broken the law and think they can get away with it just because I am poor, the widow said. It's not fair, she shouted. I have been treated badly. I want justice and it's your job to sort this matter out she told the judge, but the judge just ignored her. But the widow would not go away. She shouted down at him from her flat roof as he passed by. She yelled down at him whenever she saw him, give me justice. When the judge went to bed, she called out to him from the street. And in the morning, she was waiting by his door as he left for work. I am a poor widow and I have been treated very unfairly, she pleaded with the judge. Those who have treated me badly have broken the law and it's your job, judge, to make sure that the law is obeyed. Hmm. When the judge went to the, to the market to buy fruit, guess who was there? <laughs> when are you going to listen and give me justice, she demanded. Everywhere the judge went, the poor widow was there insisting the judge take on her case. At last, the judge gave in. Okay, okay. I give in, he gasped. I'll judge your case and make sure you are treated fairly according to the law. The poor woman was pleased. At last she would have the matter sorted and justice would be done. The end. Welcome back, boys and girls. Wow, she never gave up, did she? I just love her. I want to be like her. You know what, boys and girls? When something is happening in our lives, maybe we have a sick parent or a sick family member, or maybe things are not going so well in your home. Maybe you guys have financial problems. Maybe, I don't know, there's just so many things at the moment that is happening in our world that is sad and not okay. And I think if we can keep on doing what we're doing, we keep on praying, we keep on asking, like this widow and like the bugs in Bugs Life. Guys, you know what God says? Let me read to you in Luke 18. There's two things that I want to read to you today. In Luke 18, this, this is the story that we find, the, the, the story in the Bible about the persistent widow. But in verse 8, it says, listen to this. God's people cry to him night and day. God will always give them what is right and he will not be slow to answer them. I tell you, God will help his people quickly. Oh, guys, do you hear what the word of God is? Not Liana. Look, this is the Bible. The Bible says his people cry out to him day and night through prayer. Hey, And he says he will always give them what is right. Remember what um, uh, I think it was Vicky or Lolo that said, you know what, we can't, if we, if we, I think, you know, we can't nag. If some, you know, if, if, if our parent says no, it's no, you know, but when we ask for something that is good and what is right, God says he will be quick to answer. 
Oh, guys, that is amazing. And you know what he says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17? It's one of the shortest Bible verses, but the most important one in the Bible. It says, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, never stop praying. That's what the verse says. That's the shortest, one of the shortest verses. It says, never stop praying. And so we learn in Luke 18 that God says he hears your cries day and night. So if we keep on praying, guys, and we keep on asking God to help us in a situation, maybe you are bullied at school. Maybe you are failing at school. Maybe your parents are going through a divorce. Maybe you guys have financial problems. Maybe somebody is sick in your house. I don't know what is going on in your home. You know. But I know that my God that I serve and that you serve and that you love, he can change things in a blink of a moment. All we need to do is not stop praying and not stop asking. But ask for the good things, not for a new toy or a Ferrari or a third phone. No, guys, that's not what we're talking about. And that nagging to get something that you know you, you don't need. No, God says nag, but nag for the good things. You know, I always think about asking because how do we ask God? We ask him through our prayers, right? By speaking to him and by praying. And I always think about how does God answer us? And I'm always reminded, guys, about a robot. Now, sometimes when we get to the robot, we can go when it's green. But sometimes when we get to the robot, it's red and it's like, you can't go anywhere here. Stop. And sometimes it's yellow. And then it tells us, guys, st be cautious because you're going to stop now. Okay. And in the same way, I think prayer works like a robot. Sometimes God gives us the green light and he says, here you go. You've asked for it. You prayed about it. There you go. And then other times I think God is saying, the yellow light, just wait. It's not time yet. Just, just wait a little bit. And then sometimes God flicks the red light that says, no, what you are asking me for is not going to be good for you or for your family or for, what, for whom you are asking it for. So I think God answers us in the same way as a little robot. And you're going to make a robot during craft today to remind you. But I want you guys this week, there's a few things that I want you to remember. Number one is firstly, remember to do, don't try and do things on your own. Ask people to help you. That's the first thing. The second thing is persevere. Whatever the issue is in your life, whatever the problem is in your life, whatever you are facing at the moment, persevere. Keep on asking. Keep on praying. Get people to help you. Don't give up. Okay? The third thing is be flexible. That means be able to change. When you see things aren't working out this way, maybe think about and ask people to help you. Maybe you guys can come up with another way of trying to solve a problem. So persevere, be flexible, and ask for people. Do it as a team. And then remember, how do we ask God? We ask God through our prayers. And how does God answer it? Remember this week, it's okay if God tells you, just wait a bit. And it's also okay if God says no, because he can see the full picture of our lives. And he knows if he's going to say yes now, this is not going to be good for you. And then, guys, when God gives us the go ahead and he says yes, thank him for that. And rejoice that God has answered our prayers and have changed our lives. Wow, guys, I love this week's lesson. This actually also was for me this week because I realized there's stuff in my life that I sort of got stuck in. You know, I, I, I keep on thinking, oh, I can't do this. I, I, I don't know how to do it. And so I won't do it. But I realized this week as I was preparing this lesson that you, I'm in a way I'm stuck. And so what we need to do is, is we need to break free from the stuckness. <laughs> and we need to persevere with our plans. And maybe we just need to tweak our plans a little bit, change them a little bit, and then we might see how God just opens up a new world for us. Right. You know what? I think we should pray today. See that we're talking about prayer and God saying, keep on praying. Let's pray together before we go to the Doodle Studio. Are you ready? Close your eyes. Father God, I just thank you so much for this two stories that we, 
we heard about today. Two totally different things, a bug's life and then a persistent widow, a lady who doesn't have a husband but wasn't going to give up. She was not going to let unjust be what, we, what she's going to face every day. And through her persistence and through her flexibility, she got what she needed. And you gave to her what she needed because it was good. And so this week, I pray for all our kids out there, Father God, all the families that are represented, either online or in person at church. And I just pray, Father God, that you will just be with them. Let them feel you this week in an amazing way. And Father God, where those prayers are, maybe it's prayers that you can answer straight away, the green light. Maybe it's prayers that you're saying, just wait a little bit, the timing is not right yet. Or maybe it's prayers where you're saying, this is not good for you or your family. So the answer is no. Then Father God, I pray that you will honor those prayers, that you will bless those prayers, and that you will give favor to your children and their family. Thank you for your love. Thank you that we can speak to you through our prayers. And thank you that you speak to us through your word, the Bible, and through other people around us. Thank you that we are not alone, that we have you, our God, and that we have other Christians around us that can help us run the race of perseverance. I thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, boys and girls, I just pray that you're going to have a fantastic week. Remember, persevere in your plans. Be a little bit of flexible if you get stuck. And remember to worship God with your money, your time, your prayers, and your worship. All right, are you guys ready to go to the doodle studio? Well, there's only one thing to do. How to doodle it. Just doodle it. Doodle kids. See you there. Bye. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back to our Doodle Studio. Are you ready to doodle? How to doodle it? Just doodle it. Doodle kids. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is, is our prayer robot. Now, what do we need for this one? Well, firstly, you need to go to the web page, our kids' web page, to find the craft that you need to print off. Then you need some, some scissors and some glue. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out our robot and we are going to cut out our circles. Are you ready? Let's go. So boys and girls, now we have cut out our circles and we have cut out our robots. Okay, so let's just put them in order. What goes first? That's right, green, and then maybe, oh, green, and then the yellow, and then we have our red. Okay, so there's our robot, and our robot says, keep on praying, don't stop. Remember in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, it says, keep on praying. Right, so maybe God says to us, hey, I love your prayer. I'm going to answer it right now. So at the top of our robot, let's put our green, co our green color at the top of our robot. Then we're going to follow and we're going to stick on our little yellow one that says, wait, not quite yet. We have to just wait a bit, be a little bit more patient, have a little bit more perseverance in this. It's coming. Just wait. Okay. And maybe there's some stuff that we need to be a little bit about flexible while we're waiting. Hey, maybe there's some stuff that we have to change while we wait for that prayer to be answered. And then... There's unfortunately the red one where God's saying, uh-uh, this is not a good prayer. I can't say yes to this prayer. It's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be good for your friends. It's not going to be good for your family. So unfortunately, the answer for this prayer is no. But you know what? We keep on praying and we keep on asking, especially if it's good, question, good things that we are asking for. Good things for other people and good things for our families and good things for ourselves. And remember, guys, do not nag. 
that's not a good thing if it's for things that we don't need, like no, more toys or a better car or more cell phones. That are not good to keep on nagging. No, God, the Bible tells us we need to ask for good things for others, for our families, and for ourselves. But at the end of the day, guys, what is really important is to never stop praying. And God will answer your persevered um, prayers in one way or the other. All right, that's this craft done and dusted. Let's go to our next one. Welcome back, boys and girls. Oh, this is a bugs table. Look at all the bugs that are surrounding Lolo. There's a spider. There's a beautiful butterfly. Oh, my gosh. I love our little bugs life table. Now, what are we going to do on this table or with this craft? Well, let's first get all the things we need. We're going to go to the web page and we're going to print off all the little bucks pictures that are there. Then we need some coloring in pa pencils. We can even get some stickers. You can get anything that you want to color or decorate your bugs with. We need glue. We need a pair of scissors. And then we also need um, a craft knife because, but guys, Get your parents to help you to do this. Get an adult or um, your older sibling to help you to use a craft knife. All right. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut out the bugs that we want to do. Now, look at our picture. There is a caterpillar. There's a spider. Oh, and I also see there might be some uh, uh, a grasshopper and a bee. Oh, there's lots and lots of pictures on there. So you guys go and cut out what you want to use or color in, and then we are going to show you what to do next. Well, let's see what Lolo decided she wanted to do today. Well, she wanted to do, what's in the front there? Oh, a little caterpillar. So she chose a caterpillar. She chose, oh, Mr. Hopper from, from our story, our grasshopper. Oh, what else did she choose? What's that? Oh, that is a beautiful butterfly. She's got, oh, an ant. There we go. There's Flick or Dotter or Dot or Utter. Hey, and then who else? Oh, and there's a ladybug. I'm sure she chose the ladybug because it's so cute. All right. So the next step, what we're going to do is, is we're going to color in our little ladybug. And then if you look at our pictures of our um, caterpillar and our um grasshopper you will see that they have got two little holes that we need to cut out with our craft knife our craft knife so this is the step color in and ask an adult to cut out the holes for you for your bigger um, uh, um, bucks right guys keep on coloring keep on decorating i can't wait to see what your bugs are going to look like Right, boys and girls, wow, look how Lolo colored hers in beautiful, her, lo her holes is there. And there's just one more step that I need to show you guys, and that is with your flat little animals, a little bugs, you will see that they've got two little sides, uh, two little pieces of paper on the side. And what you need to do with those are, you need to fold them to the back so that they can, um, and then you attach them to the back so they can go around your finger. So make sure that you, you tighten them enough so that they, um, can go onto your finger but not too small so that they don't can't fit your finger so measure them carefully while you um, when you can glue them together make sure that they can fit your finger perfectly right and then boys and girls you now can have tons and tons of fun with your bugs let's see what Lolo is going to do with her bugs oh there she puts a caterpillar on and there she oh there she there's little hopper and look they are talking to each other oh my gosh and now she's going to maybe take one off and put one of the other little ones on let's see what she does look at that she's putting on her little bug <laughs> her little ladybug on her finger there we go oh wow she's having tons of fun with her bugs <laughs> there we go look at them they're on her finger she actually just needs to push them to the to the top 
Let's tell her to wish her fingers to her uh, backs to the top. There we go. Wow, look at all of Lolo's bags. They are on her fingers and they, she put her fingers through. And now she can go have a conversation with Mr. Spider and with our beautiful butterfly. Now, guys, you can go into the garden and you going, can go have tons of fun. And remember, there are plenty of bugs on that page. You can just go and look for them and, and do as many as you want and then have your own Bugs Life movie at home. Well, that's all from us. Remember, guys, persevere, try and change things that don't work, and you don't have to do it alone. Do it as a team. Look, there's a whole team of bugs. And then lastly, remember, don't stop praying. Be like that persistent widow and ask God to change what needs to be changed in your life. See you next week.